This week on The Spiel, we're on a boat and in San Francisco, join us aboard Just Dreaming. The curving, climbing streets of San Francisco take us to some of the best views of the city skyline and their painted ladies tours. The VW Vintage Fleet commands quite a bit of attention. We think our guide Dave is the reason why. And Alcatraz, known for housing some of the worst inmates, will introduce you to the man ensuring we made that journey to the infamous island. A special The Spiel San Francisco starts right now. California weather, baby. <laughs> and you are watching a special episode of the Spiel San Francisco. Are we in the Bay City? I don't know. I mean, it's obviously reminiscent of what you would see there in that part of California. This is actually Tom's place, DeSoto, Illinois. There's a reason that we're here. There's a reason that the show brought us here. Um, we're going to talk about all things San Francisco. You may know it for a particular bay. You may know it for a particular bridge. But we have so many little bitty nuggets of information that you're going to want to tune in to learn more about because we want everyone to be in the know about San Francisco. What about that? So anyway, we had two young vloggers with us when we did this trip in San Francisco. Um, Hunter Franklin is one, Marcus Taylor the other. They're here with me tonight. We're going to kind of break down exactly what happened in that really cool place called San Fran. Hunter's going to join me now. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. We're going to find out tonight, actually right now, how much you learned while you were in San Francisco, but we're also just going to dial you in more on the experiences that we've had. I'm sure people already know a lot about what we did because they follow you, obviously, right? Your yes, blog. So I love the yes man, that's very nice. You don't know anything about the age difference here, do you? But it, listen, whether you're from San Francisco, the South, the Midwest, you want to use that. You want to say the ma'am thing. You want to say the certain It's just nice to be polite. It's just nice to be polite. Now, when you got back home to Southern Illinois, what was the one thing that you had to tell everybody about in regards to what happened or your experience in San Francisco? I mean, just how beautiful it was. I love traveling and new places and just telling everybody about how captivating, how big the bridge was. I yes. mean, we went under that on the yacht and it was just humongous and how nice Dave was and how nice the captain was um, on the yacht. We have so many really great characters to feature and talk about during this hour and I'm super excited about that. A little bit of uh, information here, a little bit of history that we've uncovered. Now the Golden Gate Bridge, do you remember that? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. I couldn't forget it. Okay. What color is the Golden Gate Bridge? It's orange. It's orange. orange. Okay. Or reddish. Some Red, people yeah, describe reddish, it as reddish. Orange, yeah. Do you know that it was not supposed to be that color? No? Is it because of the weather and the, nope. this metal? No? Well, close. So the Navy wanted to paint that gold and black, and that that we see was simply a primer, but the oh. architect saw it. It was so stunning, even against the fog, and he's like, that's it. That's it? They didn't We're go and change it? it? We're staying wow. with it. Um, the color of the Golden Gate Bridge is called an international orange. orange. Okay. It wasn't a color from the original list of options, but it was the architect using it, and it was a sealant. And so he kept the color. Wow. Learned Do you something. remember how magnificent it was up against that sky shot that we got and all that great stuff? Yep. So beyond that, you know, we went over into Sausalito. We had breakfast. Man, we had some really great food there. And we're going to be showing people some little snapshots of things that we enjoyed. What else stands out? Stands out. Um, we saw all the houses uh, we drove by on the... Uh, the painted the houses. The painted ladies yes, bus tour. Yes, the painted ladies. See? Bus tour. We you drove through. Listening. We saw the houses, how expensive they were, how yes. just captivating they were. 
What I really liked is if I could own that house right there overlooking all of San Francisco. I understand that about three to four million dollars would have gotten you one of those properties. Well, we're getting there. Yeah, drop in the bucket. You remember Lombard Street? Yes, right? the way it curved yeah. up there and the drone shot yeah. up over that and driving down it. It's actually not the curviest road though. Did you know no? that? There's wow. one curvier than that. And if I had my notes together here, Vermont Street. The crookedest street in the world. Everybody likes to call Lombard Street that, but it's actually Vermont Street. So, and it wow. has, um, actually Lombard has one less turn. So there's like So there's seven one more, yes. wow. You know why they did that? No. I don't think he did any studying, but- uh, We're no, too busy they, working. They, we are, yes, too busy <laughs> editing and working. Um, they did it for pedestrian safety. It's such a steep grade there down that hill they needed to do those turn backs to allow people who walk. There were a oh, lot of people walking. Okay. In San yeah, on the side. Yeah. yeah, remember that? So to keep people safe, so they don't just come barreling over the hill, they did the turn backs. Wow. So how about that? I like that. Learn something every day, huh? Yeah. And I think you can acquire real estate there too for about the same price. Yeah. San Francisco so, is very expensive to live there. For sure. Right? But they, you know, it's, it's a friend to television, it's a friend to Hollywood. They love to film, you know, movies there. That one little area of the park you're talking about, everybody knows that from the show, The Full House, remember yeah, that? Yeah, we walked in through that yeah. and saw where they yeah. had filmed that piece right there. Right, and we saw the home in which they used as sort of the backdrop for Mrs. Doubtfire. You probably, do you remember that movie with Robin Williams? It's an older movie. I'm not for sure. Yeah, where he dressed up like the woman, the Robin Williams, oh, and he wanted to be near okay. his kids. I think so, You yeah. heard something about it. Party of Five, Full House. Those are just some, some homes. Do you remember the pink house we drove by belonging to that well-known singer that I was conceived to? My parents told huh. me they were listening to the music of. Oh my, Janis Joplin, right? You got it! Woo. Good job. He has a point. Marcus, are you keeping up? I'm way better. Okay, he's way better. Oh he's looking forward to his turn. Okay, I do think it is fair, though, just so people learn something from this, we do need to put you to the test on a couple of things, okay? Okay, all right, let's see how well I can do. Okay, there were some things that are first from the San Francisco area, pretty common things invented there. Oh, no. Do you happen to know what uh, one of those things, one of those things that originated from San Francisco? The uh, Chinese fortune cookie? Yes, it did. How did you know that? I don't know. A Japanese man uh, who lives in the San Francisco area coming up with the idea for the Chinese fortune cookie. What else? We were sitting there talking about that that one morning, I believe. We were? What else was invented? Yeah. Uh, can't what, think of it. The bendy straw. You know, straws oh. are like a negative thing now where people are like, don't get a straw. But even, you know, young kids, you see them or people who need assistance to drink. The bendy straw okay. was invented right there in San Francisco. And fortunately for us, also the first electric television. In yeah. What would we do without that thing? What would we do without well, television? Well, some people, but. Well, now we've gone to our phones, so yeah. we really don't need the television set no. anymore, right? I mean, I we know. want people to watch the spiel, but yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, you can watch it online. You can like, subscribe. What is it we need to say? Comment, like, like subscribe, subscribe, comment, share. Go to the left, Make go sure to, to turn right. on the notifications so that way you know when we post. There it is. That's it. Okay. A couple of other things, and then I will let you go here. Um, <laughs> I want to make it hard, okay? Oh, I'll try. I want to make it hard. This is, I mean, this is your chance. Do you want to you tell anybody anything about you? That vlog you do is pretty exciting. You're all over the place. Yes, ma'am. So, actually, um, a few days ago, uh, on March 29th, uh-huh. Um, of 2019. 2019, that marked my two years of getting my first camera. So I've just been blessed to be able to come this far in, that, in only two years, yeah. to have the opportunities to go to San Francisco, yeah. get go on with the spiel and yeah. people like Angie and Marcus and Rob and Jason, and all the other people on yeah. the team and um, other people I get to work with in the area. It really and it, comes and it down shows to, how yeah. even if you're in a small town, That's you it. can branch out as long That's as you it. have a passion and a drive. That's it. And a love for something. You can tell amazing stories through that lens. It's showing them your pictures, your work, and all of a sudden that person feels like they've been, you know, they've been taken to that area of the country. And that's so what I like kudos. to do. Um, some people aren't able to travel and they like, love right. seeing it and sharing that's it. That's right, so. love it, love it, love so it. So what's this question you got? All right, well, um, is Twin Peaks, you remember the morning that you and Marcus got up well before I did and yeah. decided to go out and get that sunrise and it was absolutely beautiful. We, we flew over and, and such. I'm going to pretend like I was there. But you know, you would think because that provides the best view of San Francisco, you would think that's the highest point. Okay. Is it? I heard it's not. 
Now, where we were at, around the area right there, what we could see, it was the highest. We went on the highest one to get the best shots, but I heard peaks. that it's not. I don't okay. know the name of the other thing. Okay, but. we're going to find out, and we're going to provide it right here, right, right on the here. screen. Like, right now, you know. You right know here, the highest point. Yeah, so how about that? Already, this show, can you just feel it? Can you tell how much people learn by watching this spiel? Oh, yeah, especially this show. And, I mean, just being able to learn um, because we've went, we've experienced it, we can tell you about it. Angie does her great research on it to be able to provide information on I love all a bunch of deep things. Google is our best. I mean, friend. everybody has the capabilities. It's really just if you want to do it or not. That's right. And we have some great interviews coming up in the show, so we better get to it. All right. All righty. Hopefully, Marcus can keep it up. Uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how a bike ride through the woods can make you feel like a kid again? Winding through Shawnee Forest Country is a 45 mile trail made of crushed limestone and pure adventure. Follow an old train route as it winds its way deep into a mountain tunnel, through the woods and scenic countryside. Even across bridges built in an era when narrow gauge rail cars carried passengers over the foothills. You can explore one part of the Tunnel Hill Trail at a time or brave the whole trip if you are a serious rider. When you can find a ride that's just your speed and leave your cares behind, that's how you'll know you're in Shawnee Forest Country. To find out more, visit southernmostillinois.com. Spiel here with an anomaly of San Francisco. We've got Peter Dracopoulos here. Peter, thanks so much for joining us it's today. It's great, thank you. Yeah, you're born and raised here, and um, you know, you're such a diverse individual now, um, helping with the tours to Alcatraz, but my goodness, you've dabbled in the music industry and, and famous people, and uh, who are you? What is it that you want people to know? Uh, just someone <laughs> who is, being the way the economy is, still trying to make a living. There you go, <laughs> there you go. You've been here, how long have you been on this pier? Well, in this pier itself, 2006, but we've been open since 73. Oh, we've wow. moved the shop about three times. Okay, and so people can book their tours out to Alcatraz. Tell me how that business venture came about for you. Well, when Alcatraz was in front of our doors, we weren't booking tickets because we just had people all day long. Got it. After it moved, uh, it took an effect on us as far as not doing anything. And then we were able to apply for a contract as a tour agent and be able to book tours. Okay. Then it was easy because we would sell by the day. Then they tried to eliminate scalping and different things. And now we have to sell packages sure. four days ahead. Okay. Okay. You know, so during the summer and everything, it's it's great because it's sold out yeah. everywhere. Uh, it's a little thin, you know, during the winter except holiday weekends. It's highly sought after. Why? Oh, it is. Well, what are some of those stories out there. <laughs> it's the famous people. Okay. There's a lot of history to the island besides the prison. Okay. But in all honesty, the people really don't care about the history of the island for the most part. Okay. You know, they want to know about Al Capone. They want to know about Machine Gun Kelly, okay. Alvin Karpis. Okay. Um, and, well, Alvin Karpis has a strange, uh, a strange but interesting story in a way. He spent more time there than anyone else, 25 of the 29 years. Okay. Then he was went to McNeil Island in prison for another few years. The significance of that is while he was at McNeil Island Prison in Washington, he taught a younger inmate how to play the guitar. Okay. That younger inmate turned out to be Charles Manson. Stop it. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Now you're kind of, um, you were interested uh, or maybe fascinated and I don't know for whatever reason, the youngest inmate out there at once and, and he's that documented. Was, that was Clarence Carnes. Okay. Yeah, okay. he was um, a young Indian came from Oklahoma. He was 19, I believe when he came to Alcatraz and there were six people involved in supposedly starting the 46 riot. Okay. And three of them were killed during the riot. Two were executed later at San Quentin for their involvement in the killing of a guard. Okay. And Clarence uh, 
was, you know, survived. He was given a life sentence, but later he was, you know, released. Okay. So at one point it was definitely the more famous or, you know, like you said, um, those Oh, the Al Capones, the Machine right. Gun Kellys and so on. Okay. But later on it was, I think basically just sending someone here who was causing trouble somewhere Everywhere else. else. Yeah. Okay. They wanted to maroon them yeah. out there it was, where they couldn't hurt anybody Yeah. Else. It was Robert Kennedy who closed it when he was Attorney General. Okay. Okay. Um, now, they've killed each other out there too. There's some documentation there in the books where if two of them didn't get along, one was coming out in the body bag, I guess. Well, there's a story that there was a killing in the, in the barber shop. Okay. And um, apparently there was a relationship between the person who was in the chair and the barber. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> don't know what happened there. Then there was um, someone killed in the uh, kitchen, a prisoner. And then a prisoner that we worked with, uh, Darwin Kuhn, mm -hmm. later asked me if uh, it was found out you know, anyone knew who the, killed that person. And I said, no, as far as we know. And he gave me a name of the person who did kill him. But, I, you know, I don't know if he was telling me the truth right, or not, you right. know. And uh, as far as the escapes, the famous one, obviously, is the Clint Eastwood movie, Escape from Alcatraz, yeah. where the three guys are, you know, <laughs> no trace ever found. Uh -huh. Well, I really think they got washed to sea, but their stories there and you know they lived in south america someone wrote a book they lived in the bahamas <laughs> i've had relatives of the anglin family come in here and said they had heard from you know yeah. all kinds of things okay. but the only one known to have made it to the mainland okay. was john paul scott the attempt after that which was the last one that's right that's he got right. to the mainland okay he did yeah. um what is that swim out there it's i mean it's not for the lighthearted, is it well they have two swimming meets every year, Escape from Alcatraz and uh, the Alcatraz Triathlon. Okay, yeah. You know where they swim. That's but right. they train for it, they wear wetsuits, you know. Uh -huh. They do it during the slack tide. So the prisoners didn't have all those benefits. Yeah. When you talked about having some relations with some of those out there, talk about these book signings and things like that. What 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 was that? Well, a prisoner would, when in most cases, have someone write a book for him, you right. know, and they would be here and, you know, people would walk up and sign the book and uh, they would, be, tourists would be thrilled. Okay. And probably the most common thing they would ask the prisoner is, gee, why was it so hard to escape? Couldn't you have made that swim? And, and um, the prisoner would say, well, what do you think was hard about it? And they said, well, the cold water, mm -hmm. all right the swim. Well, all right. He says, anything else? I go, gee, I don't know. And the prisoner would say, what about the guards in the tower shooting at you? Oh. <laughs> That'd have a little bit to do with it, wouldn't it? Yeah. And there were uh, those prisoners killed going to the water, and I think there were Doc Barker, I think, was shot and killed in the water. Okay. All right. Now, it's interesting because not only um, do you know these stories about what's happening out there, but some very famous people have come here and sought after information from you. Talk about some people who have walked up to your counter that surprised you over the years. You mean as far as the... Those celebrities. I think you said Kenny Rogers spent Kenny the most Kenny Rogers money was here. Joe Montana has been here. Uh, Robert Plant has been here. Okay. Connie Stevens. And matter of fact, the old series, Streets of San Francisco, uh -huh. I think there's two or three episodes where you can see the shop from the, out, the nice. outside of the shop in it. Okay, let's talk about that. Um, we're hearing that a scene from the Ant-Man was, was actually filmed. That was here. right, in, you know, right here, you know, a few feet from here. Okay. Uh, I don't think you see the shop in it, but, you know, the noise was amazing and they had a sound like they had a great time doing it. Nice, nice. Yeah. You've been here a long time and seen a lot of things. Well, we've been open since 73, which okay. a few months before Alcatraz actually opened as a tourist attraction. Okay. It was, it's $38 now just for the Alcatraz ticket. When it opened up, it was $2. $2. <laughs> My goodness, the price of inflation there. It's, it, for something when it closed that nobody wanted, it's now literally the goose laying the golden eggs. Oh, sure, definitely. You know, you know you're a well-versed individual, and I, I love to hear more about your musical background as well. You you helped to promote and, and some of these little-known bands. Let's talk about some of them and where you studied. Let's start with your studies first, and then what you Well, well that was San Francisco State University. Okay. Where, for some years, I was director of the folk festival there. Nice, yeah. nice. But we, yeah, we had some entertainers in their early years. Who, Buffy St. Marie uh -huh. was here. Uh, we were the first ones 
to bring to this part of the country from Canada, Gordon Lightfoot. Nice, nice. And Merle nice. Travis, the famous country singer. Okay. One of the disappointing things where we had Willie Nelson booked here before he actually hit with his Redheaded Stranger album. He was oh. probably going to do it here. And the day before, he was out here with his band, everything, ready to perform. Okay. And the day before, Dr. Hayakawa, who was before Senate was president of the university, okay. canceled our festival because he thought because of the trouble at Kent State, there would be trouble at San Francisco State, and all the entertainers that were here couldn't perform. I see. And uh, Willie Nelson was one of them. Oh, darn. What about the Steve Miller band? You said you had some dealings there? Yeah, uh, he was here when uh, before he even started recording at our festival. Nice, yeah. nice. Well, you know what? I could sit here and talk to you all day, but we, we definitely want people to come out and see for themselves. Well, the easiest for way themselves. for them to come out is yeah. the, is to either go to the website okay. of Alcatraz Combo Tours, and even easier than that, I can direct them to it if they want to talk to me. It's called 1-800-ALCATRAZ. That, re that really is the number. How'd you get that phone number? <laughs> I had it for years and years and basically just sitting on it, awesome. not really doing anything. And finally, I said, there's got to be a way we could use it. That's awesome. You've just been a pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate you All right. very much. All right. Take and, care. All right. We'll be right back. With more than a million visitors every year, Alcatraz is one of the most popular attractions in San Francisco. Now the island was once home to a lighthouse, a military fortification, military prison, a federal prison, and now a national landmark. Now Peter has owned this shop since 1973. Not sure that you picked up on this. Peter is blind, a successful business owner indeed. And he does it all without that gift of sight. Just to recall some of those who called this place home, it also provided housing for the Bureau of Prisons staff and their family members. During the 29 years in operation, now the penitentiary claimed that no prisoners successfully escaped. A total of 36 prisoners made 14 escape attempts. Two men trying twice, 23 were caught alive, six were shot and killed during their escape, two drowned, and five listed missing and presumed dead. Now there's an interesting story about three of those gentlemen, Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin. They carried out one of the most intricate escapes ever devised, and it's claimed that they have now sent word to the FBI they in fact made it successfully off the island and to freedom. They had been studying Spanish and some wonder if they did not call Mexico home once making it ashore. Interestingly enough, the United States Penitentiary in Marion, Illinois, very close to our studios in Carterville, it opened the replacement facility for Alcatraz. Again, we owe our trip to Alcatraz to one man who is connected, and that is Peter Dracopoulos, Alcatraz Combo Tours shop owner. You're watching this spiel. Been in this business for my entire life. I was dragging feed sacks when I was in grade school and not big enough to carry them. My grandfather sold buggies. Today we're a Kubota dealership. We don't handle feed anymore, but we do carry a large variety of products. Now get the new Kubota Sidekick for zero down and payments as low as $196 per month. See dealer for details. I have a lot of employees that have been here 15 plus years. We have plenty of experience and knowledge to help you with your needs. Your Kubota dealer. FB Mac of Foods. My name's uh, Dave Parrish and I'm a tour guide for the Painted Ladies Tour Company based here in San Francisco. It's a great company It works with a lot of the old classic VW vans. I've been in the transportation industry for about 25 years and I've driven a lot of different celebrities, you know, like Neil Young, Rolling Stones, Diana Ross, um, Mike Tyson. I drove uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, Clarence Clemens, and uh, there was a lot of different, a lot of TV personalities. But now I'm in the tour company and I absolutely love it.
Certainly Lombard Street is known for being the crookedest street in the world, but people in San Francisco love to say that title actually belongs to Vermont Street. It really comes down to what your definition of crookedest is. Now, one of the most photographed and crooked streets there, Lombard Street today, nearly one million vehicles will traverse the hairpin curves on that street. Those famous switchbacks we've already told you, they were designed to keep pedestrians safe. Okay, so you know the spiel is sometimes made up of factual information. Sometimes we just roll with it. So if I get some of these things wrong, email me, correct me, whatever. Let me tell you where I'm standing. I'm at Lombard Street here in San Francisco, the world's most crooked road. Do you feel me here? You think that's legit? I think it is. I mean, San Francisco is so magical. We're so blessed to be here and experience this place. It's kind of like um, its own island, if you will. It's surrounded by not only the Pacific, but it's also you've got uh, San Francisco Bay. So obviously that was very good during the trade period and for trades and sharing things and that type of thing. It's obviously known for Alcatraz. But let me tell you, this place has, um, well, there was that, you remember that time, guys, there was something about gold? They had a little bit of gold here, I think. Yeah, people flocked here. They found a bunch of gold. So, you know, they were obviously part of that gold rush. Also, um, this place has endured earthquakes and fire and still been resilient and come back. The people are amazing. The architecture is amazing. There is a reason that people visit San Francisco. Now, to live here, that might be another story. It's like quite expensive, I understand. Um, you know, we're, we're here to show you everything San Francisco, and the hope is one day you can experience it yourself. This is The Spiel. My name is Alyssa Goodman. I see a variety of clients here of all ages um, for a variety of mental health issues or life stressors that they're dealing with. I genuinely care about all of my patients. I know life happens, stress happens. It's a safe environment. Everything's confidential. It's never going to leave the office. You have someone who's not judgmental in any way. And that's just there to help you with whatever issue you have going on. I do pride myself on really, really genuinely caring about them and trying to help them meet goals that they set. Visit us at crhpc.org. time on the spiel it's the people it's it's those individuals that we come in contact with everybody has a story we're with captain larry right now in a body of water outside of san francisco a place that we never thought we would be we want to thank you for the opportunity captain and my um, pleasure yeah i mean you showed us so many things today and talked about so many points of interest along the waterway first of all let's get to know you why is it that you do what you do it's a relief. I have a daytime job that's uh, a lot of pressure. And You're a, being out a, here, a lawyer, right? I'm a trial lawyer. A trial lawyer. I have been a trial lawyer for 42 years. And Stressful. this gives me a chance to get out on the water and relax. Oh okay. my God, is it nice. nice, nice. When I'm out here, I don't worry about any lawsuits, any judges, any clients, nothing. Right. It's like perfect. You know, people come to San Francisco and they, and they look around and, and where we're where we're sitting right now in this body of water, a 360 view will give you a vantage point to a lot of different places of interest. Tell me what it is that you want to convey to your patrons when they come on board. What is it that you want to point out? Because I know you're proud of the landscape. Well, San Francisco's got a very rich history. I mean, we go back well before the 49ers, 1849 gold rush. And there's a lot of history that I can show anybody who comes on board if they're interested. I I just took it for granted. I mean, growing up in San Francisco, it's like, yeah, so what? Yeah. But when I take people out and go, wow, you know, kind of re re renews my energy about living in this city. It's perfect. No doubt. 
I mean, it's things that we take for granted, but people will spend a lot of money and a lot of time to get here and see these things. You were pointing out today, you, you really like the predated periods where, I mean, there were war times going on and they were strategically placed different things. Let's talk a little bit about that again. Well, okay, California has a rich history that predates uh, the United States. Originally, the Spaniards came in and conquered the area, conquered, whatever you call it. Right, right, right. They came in, they conquered the area, and we had, at that point, um, the Spanish forts. Then, Spain sold California to the Mexicans, and the Mexicans came in, then the United States bought it, and they came in. And so we've had all these different iterations of fortifications and cultures, etc., that are up and down our coast. And they're no more prevalent than here in San Francisco. Awesome. I love it how you said, you know, so many times you get people who come in and say, you know what, show me something I've never seen before. And it starts there at the arch of the bridge on the, on the right or left. It was the left side, I think. It was on the out. south side. Yeah. yeah. And, and you told me about that. And then you talked about some tunnels and such. Go into those things that perhaps people don't know about that aren't openly discussed or widely discussed. It's not openly discussed, but it's very readily available. You have, on the one hand, you have the forts on the San Francisco side, Fort Point, et cetera. All of the gun emplacements that were there for World War I and World War II. On the other side of the bridge, you've got all these forts that go all the way along the Marin headland. Even though I don't particularly think that our culture is limited to just forts, there's a lot of history that's in these areas that are in addition to any forts. So right. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun to see it and go, wow, Amazing. You know what? Um, you're a captain and esteemed and everybody looks up to you and obviously you have your other profession. But you pulled out your phone today and you shared some images and I could see the excitement in your eyes and in your voice. Is that part of it for you? It's like it's fun. The this moment. Is, the moment. I do this job and it's not always a lot of work. It's a lot more fun. Yeah. I take people out and I show them things and I watch the look on their face, the oohs and the ahs. We get the blue angels coming in here, for one example. And everybody's like, I have a ball, I have a ball. I get to drive them around and show them things that they hadn't seen before and make sure that I can explain it to them so they get the history and the significance of it. Very nice, very nice. A little older boat that we're on, but you know what, if you're a if you're someone who um, loves this type of thing and, and ab absolutely loves the water, when I mean, there's a lot of teak wood on this boat, there's some history. I mean, it was, it's, it's awesome, it's rich. This boat is a result of World War II. With the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the United States Navy decided it did not need battleships anymore, though they had stockpiled tons of teak and mahogany for the decks of battleships. So when the war was over, all this was declared surplus. And two brothers out there in, in Stockton, the Stevens brothers, decided they were going to build bigger and bigger ships. And this is the result of what was made available at the end of World War II. Awesome. It's beautiful. I walked on here the first time. I said, when you're done with it, it's mine. It's mine. Because I fell in love with it. Yeah. So that's so, my Captain, baby. is there anything else? Like, I, I want to prompt you to give the right answer. Is there anything else that I haven't asked you about that you definitely wanted to touch on? People come to San Francisco and go to the church tracks. There's so many things that people see day in and day out. Fisherman's Wharf, um, the Twin Peaks, etc. There is so much more of San Francisco. And it's not that those aren't interesting, but there's so much more that they can come to see and be a part of. And whether it's me or others, we're here to show it to them if they want to see it. That's right. Let's invite them to find you. How do they find you online? It's easy. The name of the boat is Just Dreaming Yacht. My dreams Just were Dreaming answered Yacht. today. How about yours, Marcus? Good? Yeah, Marcus? Answered. Yeah, yeah, they were answered. Okay. Okay. So anybody wants to call us, feel free to call us. And even if you're not looking for a boat, you want to see some other things, we're happy to, we, we all, the kids that work on this boat grew up in the area. Yeah. So they're happy to say, hey, what about going here? And what about going there? And give you some suggestions. San Francisco's got a lot of history, even before the gold rush. And it's here to see. That's I mean, right. That's right. you know. Awesome crew. And I tell you what, we've heard of stories today about um, engagements, you know, folks popping the question there on the bow of the boat. Uh, coming out and pressing executives in corporate America, just coming out for some time with your family. Definitely take advantage of it. This is a side of San Francisco that you have to see. And we want to thank you so much for the it's opportunity, Captain. We, it was we, awesome. Thank we, you. We enjoyed getting the opportunity to show people this because they never know about it. They never see it. That's and we right. get to take them out and watch their faces. 
Oh my God! <laughs> I think I'm we old. almost picked up a couple of whales today. <laughs> we you did. Know? We did. And we you, did. you would have never seen the whales. You wouldn't see the porpoises so unless cool. you come out here and you kind of tool around with us and help us so point them out. So cool! So cool! Again, thank you very much. My pleasure. And wow, we are kind of awestruck today. We'll be right back. You're watching the spiel. We say it all the time, you know, everybody has a story. Nancy Jensen, you're no different. I mean, just a great lady. We met her here on the Just Dreaming Yacht Charter. That's kind of cool, by the way. Yep, on uh, San Francisco Bay. How'd you get this gig? Uh, Larry, I've known for years, and it's one of those things that water's my happy place, and uh, this is a great boat to be on, a lot of history, and we just love the people that come on board. You guys are really passionate about what you do. I mean, oh, where does that come from? Oh, you know, it, it's one of those things, born and raised in San Francisco, so, you know, this has been my backyard all my life, and to share it with people that literally come from all over the world is yeah. just awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. We got on board, and we got the guys, you know, they got their cameras, and they're showing off pictures. She goes, hey, two whales tails like look at this like underneath the bridge and stuff i mean those are victories when you yep, get those type yep, of imagery yep, absolutely because right? you don't always get them what yeah. was that day about i mean so how, we how were just happen? out on a charter and uh it was a company in and uh literally just a pot of whales were playing under the golden gate and I just happened to, like, I was taking some pictures and two whale tails went up perfectly right under the bridge. And wow. It was You're amazing. Like, yeah. Money. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Um, you know, when people experience something like this, obviously they're a little intimidated and like, oh, I can never afford that, whatever. Sometimes you need to do these things because you learn just a whole other side of it. What is it that you guys to try to accomplish in a charter when someone calls on you? So we do everything from birthday parties to corporate events mm -hmm. to um, scattering of the ashes oh. and you know we kind of cater to everyone and you know the boat holds up to 42 we've okay. had as few as seven people on board mm -hmm. for like a private intimate we've had uh weddings mm -hmm. you know we've had engagements yeah. and yeah, i get down you know, on his knee like will yeah, you literally yeah. on the knee under the golden gate bridge Very you know cool. and it's just you know it's fun and it's great meeting people and being able to share our backyard with them. Yeah. Every day when you get up, you know, I, I know I do it and I know these guys do it. What What's your commitment statement? What do you want to get out of every day, Nancy? What do you, what do you look for? Live life to the fullest, you know? Yeah. And you know what? That's so poignant because Nancy also shared a story. You know, like I said, everybody has a story. Kids. I mean, you guys have been through some rough times, but you're a resilient lady. I can oh, tell. Absolutely. I mean, you've, you've come back from it and your kids, I mean, she, she gets teary eyed, but her boys are good. But man, it was a rough road for oh, a yeah. minute. Yep. You know, I joke, I don't have 12 kids. I have two. One, <laughs> it felt you know, like a lot. One, one had stage four lymphoma at eight. He's had 13 brain surgeries. My other one's the accident waiting to happen. And he was in a really serious bike accident wow. and uh, was in the ICU with brain bleed, collapsed lung. And I'm like, I only have two. <laughs> so, you know, this is my happy place because nice. I've spent so much of my time in hospitals and stressed out. And, you know, mom, you have to be strong. That's right. So I'm the strong one going, you'll be fine. There's always <laughs> someone to hit worse, you know, and stuff. And then I get to come out here and meet people like you and just have a ball. That's awesome. And, you know, they look up to you. They were texting you today and having some fun. Um, they're probably proud of you. They're really proud of mom. You know, what is it that you want um, them to know, everybody else to know about you? With This is the spiel. We like to spiel a little something. You know, give us give us that inside perspective. Um, you know, I mean, I'm all about family. I love when people come out and we, last week we had uh, husband and wife and their two kids out awesome. and it was their son's birthday. And they just become our family when they're out here on the boat. They'll I mean, we're fun, it. we're here to have a good time. And, you know, we let them drive, we let them talk <laughs> on the bike, you know, off channel and stuff. And it's just great, awesome. you know. If there's anything I didn't ask you about as a person, as the experience, um, what, what would that be? Did I cover everything or is there something you wanted to mention? I think you covered, um, you know, and it's the San Francisco Bay. So, I mean, it's always different. I mean, yeah. you can have sunny, you can have beautiful, you can have cloudy, but you know, was it still beautiful? Oh, 
We went awesome. under the Golden Gate and it was absolutely like a lake today. Yeah. You know, where it can be sunny and it can be four foot swell. So mm. you just never know. Talk about those points of interest. Like the moment we leave here, um, you want to make sure you point out this, 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 and this. So we go out under the Bay Bridge, mm -hmm. we go along the waterfront, Alcatraz is to the right, you know, Treasure Island's before. Then we usually go out under the Golden Gate, go out about a mile, come back in, and we'll go by Cavallo Point, Coast Guard, and then go into Sausalito. Along Sausalito, you have the houseboats, you have some really quaint restaurants, and the architecture is beautiful. Nice. Then you have the anchor outs to the right, which are, you know, some boats out there. And then we come around Angel Island, which has a lot of history to it that mm -hmm. we pointed out, mm -hmm. and then past Alcatraz. And, you know, it's kind of our three hour tour, it's like almost a track in the bay, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The exciting point tonight is we also we learned from um, Captain there that you do not come to San Francisco without seeing the city lights from the water. Yeah, it's a whole different experience. And what's really neat is the new Salesforce building, the top story of it, it's like a projector, and they always have something different going on, whether it's dancing girls and different I colors. Saw it's that. amazing. And, you know, the bridges are lit up, it's beautiful. So cool. I mean, you got, hey, come experience it for yourself. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We appreciate it. All right. Thank we'll be, you. We'll be right back. I'm Derek Joplin. I'm the welding instructor and the program manager. The virtual welding machines, they are able to grade you to a fuller scale. Of course, as a new student comes in, they're not used to welding. They won't take the heat. It's just really good to have them start out on that. Well, the benefits of these machines would be low material cost. The way it is set up, it is amazing of how accurate it is. I just need to begin by saying I feel honored. I've never been allowed to stand in the coveted area belonging to one Chef Lasser Sorensen. Well, well, you know, it's an honor having you here. Well, thank you. We are spieling it in the renowned Chef's Kitchen of Tom's Place in DeSoto, Illinois. We're super excited. We're gonna make something today, Chef, that is yes. reflective of San Francisco. Yes, it, it is actually an American classic, believe it or not. It uh, has an Italian heritage, okay. but it's an American classic now, uh, and it uh, stems from all the fishermen in uh, San Francisco that came from Italy. Okay. And uh, they, uh, this is basically what they would eat wh when they came home after a hard day's worth of work, and they had a little bit of everything sure. left over that they didn't sell. Yeah. And uh, I love the story. If a fisherman comes in empty-handed that day, mm -hmm. they could pass the bucket because they yes. know that they too will have one of those days yep. and they'll need assistance. Yes. Should we say it together, what you're gonna make? Yes, Chiopino. Okay, so, so the Chiopino, there was obviously a lot of different ways to do anything, okay. so this is kind of my take off on it. Sure. And uh, since we're moving into spring uh, at Tom's Place, mm -hmm. this is one of the things we'll be featuring on our spring menu now. So we want something a little lighter. And uh, one of the, the things that are reflective of Italy is the tomatoes oh. and the basil and the olive oil. Yes. So basically, uh, I stewed tomatoes, onions, fennel seeds, and leeks, mm -hmm. a little fish stock, and then just mm -hmm. let that cook for an hour. Yummy. And that's kind of the base. Mm -hmm. And then this is all the bounties from uh, San Francisco. Can you believe what the fishermen put in our bucket today? I know, we did good. Wow. We have a, a lobster, uh, wild Alaskan salmon. That's it. And uh, uh, clams, mussels, shrimp. We have a crab and... Uh, and actually, you're not even gonna worry about pulling things apart. Doesn't it all go in? I yeah, mean, it all goes in all and then we, in. We, we sit there and, and crack everything with our hands and have a good time with that too. Okay. And uh, we have some crusty bread we're gonna serve with it. And we have our misin plus. Misin plus, yeah. Misin plus. Yeah, everything in its place. That's what we need right here. So, uh, How about that? Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take the 
the shellfish first. We're gonna put that in the pot. And obviously what we wanna do is, uh, the fish that takes a little longer to cook, it needs to go in there first, right? Some of it, the more slow cooking seafood, you, yes. you wait on that a little bit, or, or well, faster cooking. Yeah. Yes, so okay. what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this broth that I made right here. Okay. And we're gonna put that in the pot. Now, how long do you need to cook these things together for it to get that consistency? Uh, you know, it doesn't need very long. All we're doing is we're, we're getting all the shellfish uh, to open. Okay. And uh, it takes about, if you put a lid on it, it takes about five minutes with no lids, maybe 10 minutes, okay. so. And when you're creating your um, tomato, the base, how long do you let that boil usually? An hour. An hour, that's yeah. right, okay. You need to decide whether or not you want to have it a little bit of spice in it. Okay. And that's where we had red flakes. And then sure. we have pepper, which is a different kind of spice, and then okay. salt. Okay. So you want to put a little salt in there, want to put a little regular paper in there, and. I like just a pinch of uh, little chili flakes in there too. Do you think back in the day the fishermen would have had all of this at their disposal? Or would they just well, I, rub I, right there on the on the docks? I, I, I think they probably used whatever there was available to them and right. it could change daily. daily. So whatever <laughs> whatever they had. So we're gonna make a, a, a little uh, nice uh, garnish. And it's safe to say that soup is always a good option when you have a multitude of people to feed. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's really, you know, it, soups are really the mother of most cuisines because that's where all the flavor is. You're okay. getting so much flavor out of it, of everything, and that's where you get most out of it too. So uh, for your pocketbook, it's friendly too. Sure. Because you, you, you know, you, you turn a a tomato broth into a, a beautiful tasting fish stew. Yeah. And also as a chef, I would imagine if you have just a little bit of a certain item, it's nice to be able to not waste that and put that in a, in a soup as well. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good place for it all to end if it needs to, we, right? Yeah, I mean, we, we don't waste anything. When we cut fish out here, we use this, the heads and the bodies for fish stocks and everything. Here first. And uh, right. so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the rest of the fish. Okay. I'm gonna put that in here. Yeah, that stuff's not gonna take long at all. That's no. already the color, it, desirable color. And some of the stuff I had, I'm making lobster sauce today, so I had some, you know, half-cooked lobsters, okay. uh, some crab and stuff, so I'm using whatever I have and whatever is in season. That's so cool. we made today also an Italian bread to go with Ooh. it, and this is ciabatta. Okay. And uh, it means like, uh, uh, what do you call one of those shoes the ladies wear in the morning? Slipper, okay. Because it's it's shaped like a slipper. It is. Yes. Oh, and it's warm. It's yeah. nice. It's yummy. So we it's, we, mm. we have that. We want to dip that in oh, and yes. get all the the goodies out of it. We know that you eat with your eyes first, so presentation is always in the forefront of your mind. I know yes. this. You already thought about this. So, you know, I I like to use a uh, a big open bowl like this just because you want to see all that absolutely great seafood absolutely. is in here, right? So now it's ready. So we have all the fish ready in here and I like to finish off. We, we, we're finishing it off with a little uh, basil and some parsley. So ah, you don't want it cooked that long. So you just sprinkle it on. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Uh, I know that some recipes calls for cooking parsley and I don't know that, that I, I see that a different way. I don't like to cook any fresh herbs. I think it loses mm -hmm. a lot of flavor. Look, even down to the way that he ladles soup, he's gonna make sure that everything lands where it's supposed to. A little fresh parsley. And what I like to do too is just put in some, just, you know, get a little crunch with some fresh tomatoes here. Mm. That is a bowl fit for a fisherman, my friend. I'm not sure exactly this is what it looked like back in the day, but. Yeah, it's probably a little fancier than they had. Yeah. And then we have our bread here to, uh, to eat. How do you um, cut the bread, sir? That knife, I tell you what, it's multi-purpose, isn't it? I saw you photograph with that knife. What, does mm. the knife have a name? Yeah, it's a Mac knife, my it favorite. Is. Oh, Mac knife, if you're watching. Did you hear that? Yep. We also want to thank Prairie Farms, our longtime sponsor for yep. Spiel It in the Kitchen, and we want to thank our new sponsor, Home Improvement Warehouse of Carbondale, for making the lessons with Lasser possible. Yes. Realty Central, also another 
of your sponsors. Okay. Real We'd like to thank all those people. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to sample it here. I want to sit down like okay. a civilized okay. individual. We'll, we'll do that yep. in the bar area of Tom's Place in DeSoto, Illinois. It's a place that you want to see. It's a place that you want to experience. You remember that show Cheers? Cheers has nothing on Tom's Place, okay? We'll be right back. This is the spiel. Let's try some of this food. Exciting. Okay. The goodies are here. So can I use my fingers? You're the chef. I just feel honored. I don't think we've ever broken bread together, have we? Was this is the real deal. We're refined this evening. Look what happens when you come to Tom's place. You're actually, you're served, you get to eat with the chef. I'm not going to make any promises because, you know, he's busy. You can request it. I don't know if it'll happen, but now you're gonna have everybody coming in and asking to have dinner with you. You notice this, right? Well, I like that. They've been coming for 20 years. There it is, right there. So uh, what we need to do is get a piece of bread. Okay. And then... Uh, Listen, pay attention. And then, you know, basically what you can do is take this wonderful ciabatta and taste it. You would go into a restaurant and just break it with your hands like that. Absolutely. You, listen, the chef said you can do it. It doesn't matter the stars of the restaurant, just do it. I mean, this is still the best tools you have, mm. but the broth is just so full of flavor. It's so good. Start to finish, we have maybe an hour in the whole yeah. process. Mm -hmm. Something you can make for your family. So, and in particular, if your husband's a fisherman. So, the most that? important thing is knowing where your fish comes from. Mm -hmm. That is nice and fresh, and everything else is it's so easy to make. That's what it comes down to, is the best ingredients. Yes. And that's what you find here. Chef, thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I think you have a little saying that we should probably pass on to our viewers. Food is love. Love your food. We'll be right back. Watching this spiel. Julie Ingram is beyond upset with us right now. Marcus is Taylor she? joining me, yes. I'm taking over. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't get carried away, but here's the thing, Julie. You know this, you've encouraged this. This day and age, these vloggers are taking over the world. And, you know, my young son, 14, says, Mom, you got to be cool. You got to get more followers. You got to know the, you know the lingo nowadays. So. Yes, Marcus Taylor, the other young man with us there in San Francisco and I tell you the work ethic is great you've already seen that throughout this show I mean just 
My goodness, you can't really even put into words what happened. It was a great time. It was really a chance of a lifetime for sure. And uh, we just had a great time. We were out there learning new stuff, getting new opportunities. It was, you know, it was a fun time. We are out in the sun, having a good time. That's so. right. So we started out with um, the Painted Ladies Tour, and uh, we've, we've shown you all of that. You have to look them up. You have to ask for Dave as your tour guide. Is Dave, there any other tour guide? Dave was solid. He knew everything about everything. It was, it was awesome. Absolutely. And he, he went overtime. He, he, Put the hours in and showed us pretty much the whole city. So he was, was so great, part. and he kept calling, saying, "Did you did you get it all? Do you need to go back? Yes. Do you need to you know?" Yep. He has a background in television, so he understands what mm -hmm. goes into getting those shots, and you know, for you guys to be positioned right and get yep. the shot. You would pull over, we get the shot, and then we hop back in the, in the little caravan. It was a good time. Right. Sure. We don't want to forget the Marker Hotel, mm -hmm. just rolling out the red carpet for you guys. The Marker Hotel was was awesome actually, and they were it was like super vibey in there. Yeah. It was, it's a it very was it's a very she she yeah. boutique hotel. Very, okay, that, that's was that your like first that. boutique hotel or that was are you the first used one to... I've been in? Yeah, that was okay. the first because normally the I'm like those you know those modern. Right. Cookie cutter hotels. So right. This one was very unique. Outside the box, yeah. indeed. Um, then, my goodness, so we went down to this pier, right? I mean, we did the pier thing to get over to Alcatraz, and we want to thank our good buddy uh, Peter for helping us make that happen. That was exciting. We told you that story. Mm -hmm. That was just, man, that was awesome. Yeah. But imagine your first time in San Francisco just showing up there on the docks and um, a yacht coming to pick you just up? Out of nowhere. <laughs> Pretty much out of like the horizon. Just well, yeah. kind of, but it was, it was awesome. It was right there, yeah. man. Captain Larry, first mate Nancy. First mate Nancy was, she was uh, a real rock star. She actually. was a rock I, star. In interview, she was killing it, so. Yeah. yeah, so we thought, you know, well, we're a video crew. They don't really care about us. You know, they're going to come in, take us out, and then drop us off. Man, we walked on board. There was food. I mean, it was just, wow. It was next level. We were there all day, too. Yeah, we were there pretty all much day and night. We were there all day. To, yeah, like, we yeah, stayed a while. Actually, a, a shot of us. I think it was me and Hunter. Uh, we were back there. We were, we were, we were, you moved we were into the boat. Off the boat. You moved yeah, into the boat. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, we're up on the deck there, and we're getting you know uh, acclimated, yeah. and, and we're meeting everyone. And these two, Hunter and Marcus, decide they're going to claim a room. I mean, they've already moved in. They're planning to stay the night. I mean, how, you guys stayed below deck. You know. When you called us up. I was actually in bed. So. There's that. Ridiculous. <laughs> in bed, like calling for champagne and caviar or whatever it is that people do on yachts. I, I'm not I'm not sure, but um, no, fantastic time. They rolled out the red carpet. We loved it. And I tell you, Captain Larry, he, he summed it up when he said, you do not come to San Francisco and not see these city lights from the bay, from the water. Breathtaking, actually. Oh, yeah. It was unbelievable. And again, we want to thank everybody for access to all the places we got to go to, Alcatraz, the boat, the hotel, which is key to, awesome. our, to our experience. So, awesome. Yeah. You know, the, the food. So before we get out of here, there are some things that we have to do. Just okay. housekeeping rules, okay? okay. Yeah. One is the word of the week because people depend on us. They learn things from us and they, they need this. Okay. Education. It is education. <laughs> and I tell you, the, the probably the only thing that we stumbled upon and we've heard from this whole broadcast is something from the chef. Okay. I mean, okay. What, what was that word again? <laughs> it's a chiopino. Chiopino. Chio Look at that. How many syllables? Chi. Opino? Oh, that could be like four. Four. Right? Yeah, four. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. G. O. P. No. Is that it? Ooh, I think that was it. And that's fish stew, essentially. Fish. So you heard it here on the spiel. And like I said, you know, it only makes sense. Um, we're in a place that's very reminiscent to what San Francisco would look like, would feel like. Um, so many great names coming out of there. A lot of celebrities, a lot of singers, songwriters, very famous individuals. And um, there's a song in particular by Tony Bennett. I think you'll know, you'll love. Um, it's uh, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, and it definitely left its mark on us, wouldn't you say? I would say so. It was, it was okay. incredible. Awesome. Until next time. And in the words written by Douglas Cross and George Corey, I left my heart in San Francisco. Tony Bennett says, I'm going home to my city by the bay. I left my heart in San Francisco. High on a hill, it calls to me to be where little cable cars climb halfway to the stars. The morning fog may chill the air. I don't care. My love waits there in San Francisco, above the blue and windy sea. When I come home to you, San Francisco, your golden sun will shine for me.